Good afternoon. This is Karen Tully, reporter for the Republican Women of Baltimore County, and we are here at our monthly meeting, and we are honored to have Dan Cox, who is running for governor. He currently is serving on the House of Delegates and on the Judiciary Committee. Dan, how does your previous experience help you to be a better governor, particularly with a progressive assembly? That's a great question. I think that the fact that we have a vision for all Marylanders is something that people are hungering for. They don't want just party po partisan politics like we've seen. They don't want to just hear cliches. They want to see somebody who cares about the people and wants to restore freedom. So I have a track record in the assembly, and everyone there knows it across the aisle as well, that I will fight for the individual rights of everyone that I have a vision to restore our freedom, our Constitution's Bill of Rights, regardless of, poli of, of party politics, to make sure that we never again have a government telling us what to do with our health, to trying, you know, to creating this atmosphere where children are just overwhelmed with suicidal ideation at 34% increase rates in my county. This is across all party lines and people are hungry. Now we see the inflation issue hitting everyone because of some of these policies we can reverse that as Republicans. We have the vision to make sure that people are free again, that they're prosperous, and that is what is unifying. And my experience in that is something that you know spans 17 years of small business. That's where I started. Uh, we'll get to that. We'll get to and, that. And, uh, can and, let me just interrupt you for a second. I'm sorry. I know that just as you were talking to those people, they said right. there's so many issues right now that are getting people out to vote. Right. Um, Dan, I'm sorry to interrupt you for a second, yeah. but I was getting Good. to the children. You have 10 children. Congratulations. Thank you. And you're running for office because you're, you're concerned for the new generation. You have proposed a parental bill of rights. Why and what can that do for parents and children? To return the power back to the parents. The parents are the ones who raise the children. They pay for all the expenses. They have a vision and a heart for making sure the care, custody, and education of their children is world-class. And so when you see that eroded, like is what's going on right now in the COMAR, in the regulations, in the Board of Education, where children pre-K and up are being taught disastrous gender transformation, gender transgender ideology, as young as pre-K, this has got to end, and I will end it on day one, and return power to the people. So House Bill 618 was to do that. It was to say simply that if the curriculum it's going to be presenting anything on these topics that the parents need to be told about it first, so it's transparent disclosure before it's taught, and the parent has the right to opt their child out. That's the, pr the premise of the bill. It was shocking that my opponent, who stands with uh, our governor, went on, the, the governor went on national television to trash the idea that very week when we had 50,000 parents supporting that bill in the legislature. And sadly, my opponent has distinguished herself by saying that she doesn't believe some of these issues even exist in the public schools. I know they exist. My kids matter to me as your kids do to you, and so we're going to change that on day one. Things have been sent to me online that show me some of the books. Uh, there was a book that we actually got a petition against with some of those issues. So it does exist. You have personal experience in running a small business. Many small businesses are suffering, especially as a result of COVID. What would you change to help small businesses and services and bring business back? On day one, we're going to issue an order that 30% of the regulations need to be rolled back on our small businesses because for the last two years, 50% of our economy has been shut down. Our small businesses have borne the brunt. They literally issued a non-essential list from my, my competitor's office. She made the determination, and it was wrong. It was unconstitutional, and they haven't even recovered yet. And while in the midst of this inflation, we have this outrageous burden on our small businesses. The regulations continue to increase. The taxation is going up because the inflationary tax is there. All of this can be done from the governor's office with an immediate relief to the small business person. And I've seen it in action in the legislature. I've seen it as a small businessman, as you mentioned, that when you reduce those regulations, now you're having more capital and more opportunity to go out and hire people that want a job. And that's what we need to do.
Well, I'll tell you, it used to really hurt me, actually, because I live near Ellicott City, and there's all these small businesses, and I would go over to Lowe's and mm -hmm. Home Depot and Walmart, and they were able to stay open, and I was just like, this is an atrocity to the small it business is. owners. So thank you for doing that. And I like the Trump rule. For every regulation that the state regulator wants to propose, I'd like to make them eliminate, too. All right. Maryland is a sanctuary uh, state. First, believe it or not, many people don't even understand that. Could you give us a quick explanation of what a sanctuary state is? Sanctuary state and what's happening in Maryland right now is a catch and release system where, our, sadly, our government is bringing in illegal aliens from the southern border, undocumented aliens, foreign nationals, unvetted. Many of them have um, great aspirations, but they should come here legally. And many of them actually are MS-13 and cartel members literally cutting people's hearts out. Like in my district, we had a, a sadly a, a body of a woman was found just recently. This has got to end, and on day one I intend to end it. My opponent says that she can't do anything about it as a state governor because this is the Biden administration's fault, but that's not accurate. The current administration is working with the Biden administration to allow money to flow to our cities to create those sanctuaries, and they're actually bringing them in, bringing individuals, releasing them onto the street. I can change that on day one, cut the funding, and allow an opportunity if the Biden administration wants to open their gates, let's send them to Wilmington if they would like to do that. But we have to make sure our streets are safe. And we can't talk about safety and reducing crime if at the same time we're actually flooding our streets with uh, dangerous individuals. You know, I'm in the media, Dan, and I poll a lot of people and I say, how many uh, illegal, uh, um, Ill illegal people do you think are entering this country every single month and I get answers like 5,000, 10,000. They have no idea that 250,000 people. And I think it's important to note that you're not against legal immigration. All. You're all for that, correct? Absolutely. In fact, my wife and I discovered after we were married that our both of our great-grandfathers came to this country on the same boat one month apart. Wow. When, and how Meant do we, to be. Meant to be, but how do we discover that? because they came here legally through Ellis Island and we have the papers. Wow, That's, that's America, that's the opportunity for all that provides rule of law, constitutional rights. If you don't have a border, and if you don't have a secure border and secure elections, you don't have a country. So these are the, you know, the primary issues that we must change on day one here in Maryland. Now you have uh, expressed many important issues for these quick interviews so people can learn fast what you're all about. But you know, Dan, if we don't fix elections, there's a problem. What do you plan to, to do with election integrity? Take immediate responsibility and authority over the election process in Maryland by uh, decertifying the machines. These machines are being tied to the Internet. They're unsecure. Packets of counting ballots are going through, allegedly going through Germany. This is wrong. It's going to end on day one. I'm going to look very carefully at how and why we procured these. My opponent allegedly procured these ES and S machines the year before the Trump election. This is very interesting. I like to see who got those contracts, where they came from. But most importantly, we've got to stop this mail-in ballot system. And also the, uh, the early voting has to end. So I want to take charge of this. I know that we have to work with the legislature, and we're going to push hard on that, but the governor can do a lot immediately to protect and secure our elections. Our elections in Maryland are one of the most insecure, unsecure elections in the United States. We need to char take charge of that and turn, turn that around by a governor that says the money that goes to the State Board of, Educa the Board of Elections has got to be certified uh, so that the initial use is not going to be poured into allowing mass, bail mass mail-outs of multiple ballots. Sometimes people are getting multiple ballots. All of this has got to end on day one, and we can make that happen. One other question, not to put you on the spot, but how do you differentiate yourself from Kelly Schultz? And are you disappointed that she hasn't showed up for several of the debates? You know, it's fantastic that um, we have this wonderful system called a primary. Republicans believe in the exchange of ideas. And I think it smacks of elitism whenever anyone in the party decides that they're, they're above a debate. That's what's going on right now in the Republican Party uh, for the governor's race. It's very sad. Interestingly, um, I have asked Fox, Fox 45 is asking my opponent to debate. She will not. Uh, interestingly, though, she showed up at a Frederick 
picnic this week uh, with me. So to say that she doesn't want to be, you know, giving me the opportunity or whatever her lie is, that's a sad state of affairs. And I'll tell you this, this is the answer. If a Republican will not show up for you now in the primary, they will not, they will not show up for you either in the general or in any day after that. So you can kiss that goodbye. So, but I'm well, the Repu to be working hard. Thank you. Well, the Republican women, just to let you know, we're open to both sides. That's what we're about. Right. We are so happy that you came here today. You shed light on so many issues. I know that you are Trump endorsed, so congratulations. Right. Very, I think very. that there's going to be a rally on June 25th that right. is going to be a big rally. So do you have any final words? Oh, the final words could be, where can people find a place to help with your campaign or more information about you? They can go to coxforfreedom.com. They can sign up, make sure that they're, first of all, registered to vote, but then also sign up to help us at the polls. There's 172 drop boxes that we have to monitor. We are looking to make sure that we have, hopefully, a 24-7 review of that with video. Because what's happening is a lot of times people are bringing stacks of ballots to dump into the, the ballot boxes. That's illegal. It's not allowed in Maryland unless every single ballot has a proxy form, which has to be certified by the local board. So you can sign up. You can help us. You can get your signs out there. We're distributing those. You can make sure that um, if you can help us out financially, come to our event, sponsor our event on June 25th. We have the, the next governor of Pennsylvania going to come here to Maryland to uh, give us a great uh, uh, speech and might have some other surprises. I, I think a Trump spokeswoman person will be there also, which That's would be right. great. People always like to hear Bruce that. Harrington with uh, President Trump's office is going to be there, and we may have more surprises oh, too. Great, great. Well, Dan, thank you so much. Uh, you have those 10 children, which I go back to. I have two children, and I'm in this, and you're in this to fight, I think, for our children and the next generation. So God bless you. Thank you, Karen. God protect you during this campaign. Thank you, Karen. Thank you so much, and thank you to the Republican women. This is a great county. This is where my, my grandmother has uh, pulled me along to start out in politics, so it's an honor to be here once again. Thank you so much.